Hey there, Bridge family, it's Pastor Jeff, and I'd like to talk to you one last time about the gospel and spiritual warfare as seen through our Stickman Gospel. We've looked at how we begin dead in our sins. We're embroiled in spiritual warfare, blinded and can't even see the cross, let alone answer the call to the cross without the miraculous work of our Lord and his grace. Then we saw the power and the purpose of the cross of Christ and how it separates out the victims from their loss of life and eternity and those that are heading to hell versus the victors who have surrendered to victory in Christ and are on their way home to heaven. Well, we've also looked at the stick man, the reality of each individual person, and even the little cross that each Christian carries. Today, to close out this focus, I'd like to look at the arrows that are representative in the stick man gospel. There are four, two little and one big and one sneaky thin one. Let me just address the fact that the two little arrows both represent God's sovereign grace and our human responsibility. Before the cross, it's the sovereign grace of God that calls and draws us. Nobody would come to the cross if it were not for the miraculous and loving drawing of our Lord. We see this in John 6, 44. And at the same time, nobody is going to be saved who does not repent and believe. So we see sovereign grace and human responsibility to understand how that process of coming to the gospel, to Christ, through spiritual warfare actually happens. On the other side of the cross, again, we see the human responsibility and the sovereign grace of God in 1 John 2, 6, where we're told that those who claim to be in Christ, if you say you've come through the cross and now you're a Christian, you must walk as Jesus walked. And at the same time, we see the sovereign grace in Romans 8, 1, which also declares, for everyone who truly has come through the cross, even on your worst day, in your worst stumble, there'll be no condemnation in you because you've been cleansed by Christ and his cross. Again, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Then we see this sneaky, thin little arrow that goes under the cross. This represents the wolves in sheep's clothing. Those that get in the church and oftentimes even into leadership in the church. And they're doing the devil's work. They are children of the devil. John 8, 44. Read the book of 1 John to understand the danger of that skinny, thin arrow underneath. Listen to Jesus in Matthew 7, 15. And the Apostle Paul in Acts 20, 29, warning of these wolves, ravenous wolves. And then lastly, the fourth arrow is the large arrow that jumps over the cross. This represents the spiritual goats, the weeds that are convinced that they are wheat, the goats that think they are sheep. They sincerely get in the church, they act like the church, they're busy, they believe, they do rituals, they're not true Christians, and they need to be warned, which is what Jesus did at the close of the Sermon on the Mount. Read the end from Matthew 7, 21 through the end of that sermon, whether it's Jesus declaring to those who have a great religious resume, like the rich young ruler, get away from me, I never knew you, or the man who builds his house on the sand, thinking that he's good to go until judgment day and the storm comes and he crashes to the ground. These arrows, I would say, next to the understanding of the cross, are the most important because they explain the dynamics that we all genuinely, truly live in and with, whether we like it or not. I pray this blesses you to the glory of God. Amen and amen.